serious because I come from Virginia. <coughs> well, it's not such a good thing. <laughs> Virginia is now coming after our gun rights. Yeah. Yeah. And thankfully, an army of Second Amendment supporters are now fighting for our rights across the country, but only 40% of voters voted in the 2019 election. 40% of voters. And so to these people now, I say to them, thank you for being here, but where were you? Did you vote? And it shows us that we must vote in every election, whether it's dog walker or for city council or state, we have to vote. And I want you to think about these numbers because Virginia used to be a Republican yes. state. Yes. The Democrats slipped it. How? Voter registration. They registered 283,000 new voters going into the 2008 election, forever changing the demographics of Virginia. Think about these numbers. 2004, Bush won Virginia with 1.7 million votes. Great, excellent. Kerry lost with 1.4. Fast forward four years, guys. President Obama has won Virginia with 1.9 million votes. Where we, with John McCain, lost with 1.7. Democrats jumped up 500,000 new voters, while we stayed stagnant. Fast forward four years, President Obama has again won Virginia with 1.9 million votes. How much did we lose with Mitt Romney? 1.7. Fast forward four years, Hillary Clinton has won Virginia with 1.9 million votes. What did Donald Trump lose with? 1.7. I like Greensboro. <laughs> you guys listen, this is good. So what does that tell you? From 2004 to 2016, 
the Republican Party did not grow, was stagnant, plateaued, while the Democrats registered 283,000 new voters, mobilized those voters, pushed them to the polls, and flipped a state from red to blue. But it's not all bad news, because I'm here to tell you, we can flip blue states red through voter registration. But the fact of the matter is, listen to me, that Donald Trump will not win in 2020 unless we register new voters. And I'm here to tell you that Virginia will choose Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren with 1.9 million votes, and Donald Trump will only get 1.7 unless we reverse the tide now. And I just love this meme of Jeb Bush because we are not low energy! No. <laughs> we are high energy! Yeah. Yeah. That was high energy. We are high energy! Yeah. That's what I want. So you guys are gonna think I'm kinda weird. <laughs> And the Democrats are fighting hard. They are gonna pour millions into this state. And I'm here to tell you that I'm not only focused on your state, but also who is that handsome combat veteran up in Michigan? What's his name? John, John James. James. John. I am officially supporting John James. <laughs> And Alabama, who's that dang Democrat down there? Doug Jones. Doug Jones. Well, I tell you that I am laser focused, like defeating Roy Cooper, and I will do everything in my power to defeat Doug Jones and flip his seat from blue to red. Oh, I have one motto when it comes to politics. Thou shalt not talk ill of thy fellow Republican. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or McCain, was that wrong? No. Should I not have said that? No. <laughs> no, I was cleaning out my closet the other day and I found a McCain and a Romney t-shirt. And my mom was like, Scott, give all the rest of those to Salvation Army, but burn those too. <laughs> So I've lived kind of a weird life. Like I said, I went from the doghouse to the White House. You know, I went from cleaning up dog droppings. Now I'm going to San Francisco, and I'm going to clean up human health. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> and this, I want you to look at these pictures. This is story time for a second. In the top left-hand corner, some of you guys know me as that strange guy <coughs> standing on a street corner with a sign that says 3.6 million black children living in poverty. Why? Do Democrats choose illegal immigrants first? Yeah. And this crowd formed around me. And at first they were very antagonistic and very hostile. Like, what the heck are you doing? I said, well, I believe that silence is compliance. And if you are not a part of a solution, you are a part of the problem. And I poured my heart out to them. I said, I care. That's why I'm out here on the street corner and I can make a crazy person. Because I love our country. And I think it's wrong that our potholes are not filled. And I think it's wrong that our education system is worse than Japan. I think it's wrong that we have homeless veterans sleeping on the streets. And look, we're taking a selfie. I was able to turn a group into a different way of thinking by showing love kindness, compassion, sincerity. And look at this photo here. This woman bent over the table at Taste Buds Popcorn in Virginia Beach. We got permission to set up a voter registration table. 
Now this woman in gray hasn't voted since 64. Oh my. I said I wasn't born yet, dear, but it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> now would she have registered to vote had we not been there? I don't know. No. But we were there to help her and turn in her form and she was able to help elect Donald Trump in 2016! <laughs> forgot to tell you about me working the corner for a second because I, I stand on a lot of busy street corners and my mom always my mom always tells me she says Scott stop saying you're working the corner <laughs> stop it you're gonna get yourself in trouble Trump will never hire you if he thinks you're working the corner so I'm very careful how I say that now now in this picture, we're at the beach. Oh my gosh, you guys live in North Carolina. You got beaches galore. You live in such a beautiful state. <laughs> Why are you not talking to the babes at the beach? <laughs> now, that's like a two for one right there. <laughs> and so we're at the beach in Virginia Beach. And see that woman in front? Her name is Kristen in the gray. Well, I told you guys I'm a little bit weird. In my community, I run with a sign on my back that I wear as a backpack that says Trump on it. <laughs> I know. I figure if I'm going to exercise, I might as well advertise for our president. <laughs> and so this woman, she turns around to me at Starbucks and she says, You're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always a little sheepish at first because I don't know what they're going to say or do. And I was like, yeah, that's me. How are you? And she was like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and what did I say to her? I love you. I love you. Are you, are you registered? Oh, you and you put an address. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I say wrong. But no, I said, are you registered to vote at your current address? <laughs> I want that vote. I'm fighting for that vote. And then I said I love you. <laughs> but this woman, I've had her into my home for game night, for movie night. I turned a stranger into a friend, into an activist for the Republican Party by being kind and loving and compassionate. <laughs> And this photo in the bottom left, <coughs> this is Allison. We're at church. But Scott, you cannot mix religion and politics. How dare you? No, not Greta. <laughs> Did you know only 25% of Christians vote? Oh, 25%. That's why President Trump has lodged evangelicals for Trump and why we must go into churches and we must register voters in our churches, in our synagogues. The faith community will vote conservatively, but they cannot vote if they are not registered to vote. So your call to action, because I don't want you to leave here today and go, I did it! <laughs> I saw Scott, I feel so great about myself. No. I will, I'm glad you're here, but I will be sorely disappointed if you guys go home and don't register any new voters. So your call to action is I want you to reach out to your pastor, your rabbi, whoever your faith leader is, and ask for permission to set up a nonpartisan, non-political voter registration table. You're not going to go in there as the GOP or Trump. You're just going to give an opportunity for the faith community to get registered to vote. Scott, and I'm here to Scott, tell you. That's all I do. I'm with Family He's Research. He's amazing! I'm with Family Research Council. All I do is work with pastors. Come on! Thank you for your up the Christian vote, we will never lose another Absolutely. presidential election. <laughs> Please set up outside libraries. Moms are there with their kiddos at 8 a.m. banging on the gosh darn door. Set up at libraries. And last, how many colleges do we have around here? A lot. Are we talking to them? No. Should we be talking yes. to them? Yes. yes. Should we let the Democrats get to them no. first? No. No. I want to make this very clear. 
Remember how I especially reach out to the black community? I am a white man, but I show love and kindness and sincerity. You do not have to be a college student to reach the college student. So you guys need to still go out to the local college universities because if they're only being fed one thought and they don't hear an opposition, well then we're shooting ourselves in the feet, guys. So please go to your colleges and universities. Where to register voters? So your motto is kind of like the Little Mermaid. You want to be where the people are. <laughs> Wherever they are. Because guys, you're wonderful people, all of you, and I'm so glad you're here. But you all agree with me. I'm preaching to the choir. We need to talk to people who don't agree with us. The soft Democrat, the independent voter, the voter that's going, oh my gosh, the Democrats are now gun grabbing. They want to give health care to illegal immigrants? What? Yeah. And they're supporting Iran? <laughs> what is happening to this Democrat party? So we need to go talk to them and persuade them. That's why Hillary Clinton lost. She only went to her base while Donald Trump was doing two, three rallies a day going into Detroit, Michigan. So please go where the people are. Do you guys have a Home Depot here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? That Bernie Marcus, the founder of Home Depot, is dedicating 90% of his legacy to re-election Donald Trump! <laughs> Set up outside Home Depot. Your motto is, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So wait until someone asks. <laughs> but only if it's a police officer, because sometimes they got those security guards, those rent, uh-uh, don't listen to them. Say, I want a police officer with all due respect. <laughs> Do you guys have a Chick-fil-A here? <laughs> that shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> those people agree with us. So please set up outside Chick-fil-A too. There was a young man that was, say it again. Already get it. You get it. Walmart. Think about it. What would the Democrats do? Ask yourself that question. Would the Democrats be at nursing homes? Yes. Would the Democrats be at colleges? Yes. Would the Democrats be at graves? That's the one exception to the rule. No graveyards. That's what the Democrats do. And look at these two cute young things. They have ready Hillary Hill No bumper stickers. And they're at Bob's Gun Shop in Norfolk, Virginia. Do you guys have gun shops yes. here? Yes. Do you have gun shows? Yes. Come on. There's a big one today. Perfect. So we need to set a calendar of every gun show in North Carolina from now until October 2020 and register voters. This is your mission. We need to be out there. Boom! No pun intended. <laughs> okay, so, materials needed. The back of my car used to look like this. It was beautiful, it had everything. Unfortunately, on my first day of vacation in North Carolina, I got T-boned in a horrible accident. Oh, I know, but it wasn't a Democrat, don't worry. <laughs> but I had everything. I had clipboards, I had voter registration forms, and the power of a thank you letter. I have handwritten 2,700 thank you letters to voters across the country. And I want to tell you a story because it makes a difference. I was knocking in a Democrat part of Virginia, and I go up to this guy's door, and he's a hard Democrat, and it turns out he's in the Teachers Association. Oh. Oh. Bless, his Bless his heart. <laughs> I learned what that means. When I was in Texas, it was May, and I was like, oh my gosh, guys, it's so hot outside. And everyone was like, bless your heart. And I thought, gosh, everyone in Texas is so nice. <laughs> Come to find out, bless your heart means you're dumb as hell. <laughs> but you're cute. <laughs> so I go up to this guy's door and I said, Sir, I'm here to ask for your vote today. And we get good conversation. I used to work in the elementary school. Thank you for your service. Thank you for supporting our children. And we have good rapport. 
So within three days, I write him a handwritten thank you letter that I delivered to his door. Then, a couple days before the election, I returned to his door and I said, Sir! Not that loud, I don't want to scare him. I said, Do you remember me? He said, You're that nice young man who wrote me a handwritten thank you letter, and I'm here to tell you that you've earned my vote this November. So I turned a hard Democrat t shirt to vote Republican by what? Being be loving, nice. kind, yeah. compassionate, putting okay. gratitude in my attitude, by thanking and being grateful. That is how we win, guys. That's why I'm going into Democrat cities across the country where the Democrats have neglected our cities, and I'm showing that conservatives are there to sweep up the trash! Yeah. Yeah. How to approach a voter. <laughs> so some of you have heard that when I take a photo with you, I always ask for permission to put my arm around you, because I don't want to Joe Biden any of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I meet a lot of little old ladies across the country. They love me and I love them. And yes, I always ask for, that's why I just want to make that clear, in case there are any Democrat spies in here, you know. <laughs> but I think the best way to learn how to register voters is to see it in action. So I need, please, a volunteer to help me with this Here next part of the exercise. Here she can. Okay. What's your first name? Marcy. What are you doing this? Say it again. Marcy. Okay. Round of applause for Miss Marcy. Yeah. Round of applause. Okay. Sit right here, please. Okay. So Miss Marcy is a Trump supporter but she's not registered to vote. And I know that sounds weird, but for example, there are tens of millions of Christians that agree with us but are not registered to vote. So they exist. So you're at Home Depot, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come up to her. I have my clipboard, my voter registration form, a sign up sheet, a pen, and a cute smile. <laughs> I come up to her and you're a big trumper. You're, you're wearing what you have now. Ma'am, how do you feel about securing our border? I'm for it. I want the wall. Excellent. Are you registered to vote at your current address? You're, you're not. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, well, I can register you to vote right here, right now, in two minutes flat. Hey, is that right here? Excellent. Perfect. So 90% of communication is body language. Am I good? So when I found you're not done. I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> So I nicely but aggressively shut that clipboard over to her, indicating sign this. So now in this next part of the presentation, Marcy, you're a Trump voter, but you're already registered to vote. Okay. And you're still at Home Depot. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna come up to her on my clipboard, my sign sheet of pen, and smile. I come up to her. Ma'am, how do you feel about protecting our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms? I've got my gun in the back. Oh. Okay, I'm messing with her. <laughs> Are you registered to vote at your current address? Of course I am. Excellent. Will you please sign my petition supporting the Second Amendment that I'll give to our congressman? Yes, I will. Let me get these 10 people over here to help to sign it as well. Oh, okay. Excellent. Good. That's great. volunteer here for the Greensboro Republican Party! Yeah!
wanted Soleimani to run for Congress. Oh! Oh! That's her. I said I'm a Christmas car. That's Marty. So I don't know that. I'm coming up to her. I've got my pen, my clipboard, my voter registration form, and a smile. You're so sweet. Thank you. So I'll come up to her. <laughs> Ma'am. How do you feel about supporting putting America first? I think we need to put the Democrats first. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 I feel like a dagger is in my heart. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a blessed day. Thank yeah. you so much. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> She's no longer supporting Soleimani. <laughs> so, when I found out she's a Democrat, am I willing to be antagonistic? No. 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 Am I willing to pick a fight? No. no. I'm here for one reason. I am here to win. So use your time effectively and efficiently. Don't talk to a whole bunch of Democrats and waste your time. Register as many Republicans as humanly possible. Get as many volunteers as humanly possible. That is the goal. That's how we win. It's a numbers game. How to make sure people are conservative. Did I ask her if she's a Republican? No. Did I ask her if she's a Trump supporter? No. no. I asked a qualified question to determine if she agrees with conservative ideology and then when I found out she's one of us, what did I say? Are you voting for Andrews? That makes my heart melt like butter going down hot toast. I love hearing that. Look at the screen. Don't you dare laugh. These are my friends. I'll hurt you. These are two real life Trump supporters. They messaged me on Twitter and they said, Scott, I want you to know that I love the work that you're doing and I love our president. And what did I say to them? Are you ready to vote your current address? Wrong. I said to them, I love you. And you are welcome, and you are accepted, and you are family, and you are one of us. And then I said, are you registered? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I love going to Trump rallies. Do I look like a typical Trump supporter? No. no. Do I look like a typical Trump supporter? No. I've got all this long hairs. I'm a millennial. I'm everything that the Democrat Party thinks should be voting Democrat, but I reject the Democrat Party. And so what I want you to take away from today is I want you to remember these two people. And I want you to remember me. Because we all do it. Sometimes you get preconceived notions and you go, that purple-haired, tatted girl who's pierced from head to toe, she couldn't possibly support Trump. But I'll tell you, I found some of those people at Trump rallies. <laughs> so ask everybody the question like I did with Marcy. Because that's how we're gonna fight for every vote to re-elect Donald Trump on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Pictures guide. I want you to look at the top left-hand corner. Who is that a picture of? Yeah. What did the Democrats try to do to them? Destroy him. Why are the Democrats still trying to do to them? Destroy him. They tried to tear this family apart over politics over power, and how dare the Democrat Party say keep families together when they try to tear this family apart? And how dare Democrats say believe women when they didn't believe these three women? And look at the bottom left-hand corner. What do you see? A double amputee with our president. And he can't feel touch. So what does our president do? He touches his face so he can feel that's our president. That is how compassionate our president is. And look at the middle picture. What do you see? An elderly grandmother clinging on to our president. And who did she lose? She lost her granddaughter, a police officer in New York, 
and she's clinging on to our president with love and with comfort. And what's our president doing? He's holding on to her hand. This is the side of our president the media doesn't want us to know. Because if everybody else saw this side of him, then they would fall in love with him too. And that's their worst fear. The Democrats' worst fear is us coming together yeah. as family, as uniting. How many of you are followers on social media of me? Please raise your hand. Thank you. You guys are here because of social media. So you know what I say? Let's use the Democrats' own platforms against them to defeat them. So I want you to post on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Post on everything to show this side because Republicans think with our heads, but Democrats think with their hearts. So we have to, it's, it's true, they think differently. So we have to pull at the heartstrings. We have to pull at the emotions. That's how we win over the Democrat voter. Social media post. So who are these three cute young things? What are they holding? says stop Hillary and I said we're at the boardwalk oceanfront in Virginia Beach having a blast registering voters hashtag me right what is hashtag me right that is the GOP RC hashtag that they use and whenever you see that it means that they're posting on behalf of the Republican Party and so the media all said in 2016 Millennials all like Hillary women all like Hillary they didn't Use social media to defeat the Democrats. Now here in North Carolina, it's so easy to register voters. The only thing that you need to do is when you have that form and when you get somebody registered to vote, turn in that form as soon as possible to your local voter registration office. As you see here, it is due 20 days before election day. The voter registration form, once you collect it from somebody, is due 20 days before election day. But my motto is get it out of your car, out of your purse, turn it in, make sure that person is registered to vote. Trivia time. What is the only state in the entire country that doesn't have voter registration? Wyoming. No. Yeah. North Dakota. Eh? North Dakota, I think it's because it's a tundra and it's so cold and they all know each other. Just a theory, just recap for you. So all you have to do in North Carolina, if you want to register someone to vote, may I have a form please? So again, if I take this from Marcy and it is filled out, I am now the bearer of responsibility where I turn this in 20 days before election day. Is that clear? Yes. Am I clear? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what other ways can you become an activist? Some of you guys know me when I'm not running with my luscious locks blowing in the wind. <laughs> and when I'm not working the street corner, sorry mom. <laughs> I'm at Starbucks with my Trump computer yes. sitting in the drive through window. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody going by, and so when they're a supporter, they're like this, and I'm like, you know, we can't hear each other. But what I do is I run out to the Starbucks to the car, and I roll down the window, and then what do I say? Beautiful. And do you remember my car that said Veterans Before Illegals on the back of it? Well, what I would do is I would park my car at the end of the drive-through, <laughs> so everybody had to see my car. And then if they didn't see me in the drive through window, and then if they didn't see my car, in which case they maybe why they should be driving, I was inside writing thank you letters. So there are activism ways that you can get out the vote that you don't have to be as bold as me. It can be as simple as sitting at Starbucks, reading a book with a Trump hat. You'd be shocked at how many people will come up to you and say, I like your hat, or I want to support our president. Introduce yourself. Make sure they're registered to vote and have them join the Greensboro Republican Party! A letter to the editor is a 250 or less document that is a persuasion piece. 
It's your opportunity to reach voters because people do read these. So the Virginian pilot, shockingly, was published my letter to the editor. I think this is very important, so I want to read it to you. There are 3.6 million black children living in poverty, 4 million Hispanic children living in poverty, 4.2 million white children living in poverty, 500,000 homeless Americans, and 50,000 homeless veterans. While American citizens are sleeping on the streets, why are illegal immigrants benefiting from our taxpayer money? While American citizens are locked up for breaking the law, why are illegal immigrants rewarded with sanctuary cities? While millions of Americans don't have health care, why is New York City going to cover the medical costs of 300,000 illegal immigrants? If veterans' lives, black lives, Hispanic lives, and white lives matter, why are illegal immigrants rewarded no. for breaking the law, no. but American citizens come no, last? No. 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 Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I agree, Miss Beverly. I remembered your name. How good am I? <laughs> if you guys feel passionately about this, it's not good enough to just post on social media. It's not good enough to just say, no, here, I need you to go out and register voters. I need you to do everything in your power to reelect our president, because I'm telling you, this is it. This is it. I'm not doing, I'm coming here free of charge. I'm not asking for a dime. I believe so passionately about this issue. I'm willing to risk everything to reelect our president. And if you feel the same way that I do. <laughs> you to fight with me, please. So you can copy my words. I will make this available for you. Put your name on it. I don't care. Plagiarize me. <laughs> Who is this woman? What's her name? <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> I heard convict. <laughs> I heard criminal. Her name is Brenda Snipe. Yeah. Yeah. Such an appropriate name, isn't that? Yeah. Brenda Snipes from <coughs> Broward County, Florida, where I'm going on Tuesday. I'm going in the belly of the Now, what happened in 2018? A ballot box appeared out of nowhere. Ta da! Magical, right? When we were about to win the election. But it was because. <coughs> of investigative journalism that this photo of the ballot box being delivered by an Avis van shut down that ballot box from being used. And now we have Senator Rick Scott! Yeah! Yeah! And Governor Ron DeSantis! If you see something, say, say something. something. Wrong. <laughs> Take your picture. If you see something, pull out your gosh dang phone and record it, <laughs> and then send it to your pal with three hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. And we'll yeah. put it out there. Yeah. And we'll expose the dang Democrats. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> just, just a just a tip. When you have your phone, may I borrow your phone for a second, please? If you're trying to be a secret agent, don't be like, so hey, what you doing? <laughs> kind of do it like a little bit more like James Bond, like, put it, put it right here. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so be a little bit more clandestine about yeah. it, okay? Because I've seen people do that where they're like in your face, it's like, girl. <laughs> Letters to voters. <coughs> this is very important. The Democrats. Right now, as I talk to you, at this very moment, are writing and written get out the vote letters in states like California, Texas, and New York to flip your state from red to blue. Did you know that? Yes. And every single special election since Trump was elected, they had their army of volunteers write handwritten get out the vote letters in every special election. 
So, I heard this was happening, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, where's the Republican Party? Why are we doing this? Come on! I got lots of grandmas that will do it. And so, just like the Baltimore cleanup, where nobody else is taking action, we did. I said, fine, do it myself. So I created letters to voters, and in 2018, before the midterm elections, we wrote handwritten get out the vote letters into Missouri, Ohio, and West Virginia, which I target as the three most likely states that we could flip from blue to red. And I'm here to tell you that we were successful electing Governor Mike DeWine in Ohio! <laughs> and electing Senator Josh Hawley in Missouri! <laughs> but this was done strategically. We didn't write to hard Republicans like yourselves. You guys don't need a reminder. We wrote to independent voters. We wrote to soft Republican voters in an effort to push them to the polls. And I'm here to tell you that we're gonna do this again in 2020, and we're gonna help North Carolina! <laughs> this is my family by choice, not by blood. You see, because as Trump community, we don't know each other. You guys are all strangers, but we feel like we do because we share the same values and principles. So before you leave here today, please make friends with five strangers. Just do it. If you left today not knowing five people, then you failed. So please, I want you to become a family because I'm leaving. I'm going all across the country. You guys are staying here. I want you to act like a fam. Now, Jocelyn in the <coughs> top left-hand corner, she's a mother. She said, Scott, I'm worried about my baby. She said, I'm worried that my daughter will have the same rights and privileges that I have growing up, and that's why I'm helping you. <laughs> and there's Penny in the gray that I met through Twitter, and Eli, a Puerto Rican American, and there's Miles, the floating head in the back. Miles, where did I meet him? Starbucks! <laughs> I was wearing a Stop Hillary t-shirt. He wasn't registered to vote. I found out he was a conservative. What did I say? He wasn't registered to vote. His friend Nathan was there, who's also a conservative. What did I say to him? He wasn't registered to vote, so I registered him. His girlfriend, Helena, was there. She was not registered to vote. What did I say? Are you registered to vote with your current address? So guys, I registered three millennials to help defeat Hillary Clinton simply by wearing a Stop Hillary t-shirt at Starbucks. Come on! <laughs> and we're having so much fun, there's a gosh darn dog on the table. <laughs> See the dog? Dog's on the table, that's lit. That is a lit party. And you can, dare I say, have a wine party. You can have a shoot the whiskey party, but I ask you to please drink responsibly because I can see your letters right now. Dear Robert, please vote for a <laughs> So please vote responsibly. Please drink responsibly. Community <clears throat> service. <clears throat> Some of you know me as the guy that cleaned up Baltimore. Yeah. I've been picking up trash for years, and I used to text people and I'd say, hey, want to go pick up trash? <laughs> I wouldn't always get a text message back. <laughs> but now, I have people begging me, Scott, come to my city, I'll help you pick up who in San Francisco. <laughs> and I just want to uh, point out, <clears throat> the Baltimore Sun attacked me for our cleanup effort, I saw picking up trash. They criticized. I never thought as a grown adult I'd ever find the day that I was attacked for picking up trash. But that's okay. Even Roger the Arena was there with his daughters, his wife, their dog. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> and, and he helped elect Dan Bishop to Congress. <laughs> Now this woman is special, her name is Colleen. I met her when I was working the street corner. I was out there with my sign, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I said that, she said you better stop that. <laughs> she turned around, she saw me out there, she dropped off her husband and came back. 
and she said, Oh my God! I can't believe there's another Trump supporter out here. And what did I say to her? Are you registered to vote? an address. But my favorite part about Colleen is she's a two-time Obama supporter that flipped for President Trump in 2016. And I have to say this. <clears throat> we do not judge the President Obama voters. We welcome them. We embrace them. We accept them. We hug them with permission. <laughs> and there are several people here today. I'm not going to point them out with all due respect to them. We have several walkaways from the Democrat Party here with us today. Almost done, don't worry. <coughs> and Virginia Beach, oh, this is right on the border with North Carolina, right on the border, down in Pongo, Pongo, Virginia. We painted a Save America, Never Hillary. Oh. <laughs> So we got the whole team together, and I have to show you the most important part, because guys, look, we built a wall. <laughs> But it was so much fun. We had the whole community come out. See those three military men? They wanted their picture taken. I said, of course we'll take your picture. And then what did I say to us? Are you interested in the current address? Wrong! Thank you for your service. I said, I love you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for defending the red, white, and blue. Thank you for defending all glory. Are you single? <laughs> I said, are you registered to vote? <laughs> Look, a boy's got to do what a boy's got to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <coughs> what, is, what are some of the themes of this presentation? Love, kindness, compassion, sincerity, gratitude, thinking outside the box. When have you ever heard of somebody sitting at Starbucks, running with a Trump backpack, painting murals, writing letters? There's something for every single one of you that you can do to help elect our president. So please remember that. Think outside the box and have fun with it. My website is scottpressler.org. I'm completely independent. I'm not the Trump campaign. I'm not the GOP. I'm not the Republican Party. I am simply a dog walker on a mission to do everything within my power to re-elect Donald Trump Woo! on the Thank you to Sue Butcher for having me. Just a little bit of love. 